Hello everyone, I'm Crystal Redding, an attorney in Raleigh, North Carolina. We are coming to you from Studio Ninth Hour in Raleigh. Thank you Rodney Dixon for providing this facility for us to tape this presentation and we want you to check out the Dixon Brothers. Follow the movement of the Dixon Brothers. These young men are totally talented. Please check out their website at DixonBrothersMusic.com. You can also find them on Facebook and on Twitter, Dixon Brothers Music and Dixon Brothers 4. We are going to be talking to you today on behalf of God's Women in Ministry, Music, Business and Entertainment Conference. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry I cannot be with you all today and in person, but we want to bring you the information you've been waiting for. Thank you, Apostle Vero Howard, for the opportunity to talk to your attendees and help educate them. This is an educational session. Apostle Howard is a dynamic woman of God. She is a visionary, super hardworking woman, building that kingdom up for God. We want to talk to you today about the importance of copyright. First of all, what is a copyright? Copyright, according to the legal definition, basically means proof that the music is yours, that you are the legal owner. We're going to be talking about music today. This is a music conference, so our copyright presentation will be mostly with regard to music. Why is it important for you to make sure you have a copyright registration for your music? Why? Because the owner of the copyright is the person who receives the royalties and other income that can be derived from that musical work. If you spend all your time in a studio just like this, working hard, recording, and all of that, you want to make sure that you are the one who receives the money for all your hard work. A copyright is what's known as intellectual property. There are different kinds of property. Personal property is like clothes, rings, cars. Then we have real property. That's like land buildings on land. Intellectual property is a copyright, a patent, or a trademark. It's kind of invisible, but it's still a property. And you can also pass along this property to your heirs. And just for your information, it's especially important to know, as a songwriter, copyrights last 70 years after the author's death. That's a long time not to receive the money you're supposed to be getting. So we want to make sure at Mad Praise Music Publishing that you are available, you have the information available to protect your copyright. How do you register a copyright? You go to www.copyright.gov, www.copyright.gov. We're only going to give you um, tidbits of information. We have uh, these sessions that we do with Mad Praise Music Publishing throughout the year. You can come to different conferences and see a more full presentation, but we want to give you enough information to get you started. Please visit our website at madpraisemusicpublishing.com for more information. The most popular way to register your copyright is through the ECO. That is an electronic version of copyright. You file the copyright registration electronically as opposed to paper. It's faster and it's less expensive. Please read the ECO tutorial. It has valuable information and all of the ways and the different, uh, different scenarios you run into when you're filing a copyright. The cost for copyright can vary depending on the work. So for a single work, that means one song, one author is $35. That's pretty good. For multiple works, it's $55. And if you still want to do the draconian way of paper, it's going to cost you $85. So we would prefer, and of course, it looks like the Copyright Office would prefer, that you use the electronic version for copywriting your works. Some of the information that you will need to know when you copyright is the author's name, the address, and this includes everybody that participated in the work. And we're going to talk to you later about you making sure that you have a song collaboration agreement for all the people that participated on that song. One of the other things you'll need to know is have the deposit ready at the time of your copyright registration. What is the deposit? The deposit is the actual song, the electronic copy of that song. You need to have that available to upload for your electronic copyright registration. 
How long does it take? About three to five months is the processing time for electronic filings of copyright. If you use the paper, it can take up to 10 months. Sometimes it has taken more than a year. It just depends on how busy the copyright office is. And then after that processing time, you will receive a certificate of registration, which is your official proof that that song belongs to you. We want to make sure that you have this copyright registration done so that you can gain the money from the different streams of income that are available for a song. There are 13 streams of income that are available on a song. We're just going to give you a few of them. There are mechanical royalties for physical sales, digital royalties for digital sales, like through CD Baby or TuneCore. There are, um, the mechanical royalties are for the actual physical copies, the actual CD, the hard copy that you can pop into your players. You have public performance royalties. You have synchronization license royalties. You have mechanical synchronization royalties, print royalties, digital download mechanical royalties, streaming mechanical royalties, and it goes on and on and on. We at Mad Praise Music Publishing want to make sure that you are aware of the different streams of income that are available for all the hard work you've done and that you are the one who gets paid for those. Of course, for the, per the public performance royalties, you need to register with one of the performing rights organizations, ASCAP, BMI. They have a wealth of information on their websites. Go ahead and register as a songwriter and or a publisher and you can receive all of that valuable information. Now there are a number of updates that are in process right now on copyright laws. You want to pay attention to those. The U.S. Congress has been holding hearings on updating copyright laws, so stay in tune with those changes by going to the Copyright Office website, that same website address I gave you earlier, www.copyright.gov. Um, what's going on is People are trying to keep up with technology. The copyright laws have to be right in line with technology because of the number of copy infringement cases that have come up from downloading music, streaming music that doesn't belong to you, and royalties that are not getting paid. These laws are being updated. Um, so try to crack down on people stealing your music. Now, I want to talk to you very quickly about song collaboration agreements. The time to sit down and talk about your project and the people who are involved, the bass player, the drummer, the horn player, if you've got live instruments, um, the singers, rappers, is before you start the project. Do not wait until money hits the table to start talking about who's going to get what. The song collaboration agreements list all the people who are involved in a song and their percentages of ownership. When I talked earlier about the copyright registration and listing all the authors of that song, the song collaboration agreement can list the same information. Those authors' names, address, contact information, and the percentage of ownership for that song. Why is the percentage of ownership important? And why do you need to have that in writing? Because when you go to BMI or ASCAP to register that song, for the payment of public performance royalties, those percentages that are used is what ASCAP and those performance rights organizations will use to pay out those royalties. Why is that important? Because you need to know how much you're supposed to be getting paid. Someone else needs to know how much they will be getting paid. You want to come to an agreement before the project gets done so that the expectations will be in place. Once money hits the table, too late to be talking. Somebody may have an expectation that they will be receiving a certain percentage of the, the revenue from that song. You don't want to get into that situation later down the road. You want to cover that at the beginning. If you've already started your project and you're just seeing this presentation and you want to get a song collaboration agreement, contact us at madpraisemusicpublishing.com. We help with song collaboration agreements. We help with production. We help with referring you to other attorneys and other resources <clears throat> in order to get those needs covered. Also, we need to talk to you about other aspects of a CD that are important. Not only is the music there that needs to be copywritten, you also need to consider 
the graphic design that's used for the CD. Somebody did it. You need a graphic design agreement with that graphic designer. So that graphic designer can release ownership of the graphic design so that it will belong to you. You also need to deal with the photographer. If the photographer took pictures and you're using those pictures on your CD, you need a release of the ownership of that picture or pictures on your CD so that they belong to you. Also pay attention to barcode registrations. That, that is what is scanned on a physical CD for sales. And there's also a digital code that's used to record sales. Um, sales. So think about also going to SoundScan. Do a search, Google SoundScan. Your songs need to be registered with SoundScan in order to get digital royalty so that they can be monitoring that song being played in the digital world. Now, I know I threw out a lot of information to you this evening, but I really hope that you were paying attention. But if you should have any questions, please visit our website, www.madpraisemusicpublishing.com. And I want to also introduce to you my business partner, Andre Bright with Mad Praise Music Publishing. He's gonna give you some information regarding the trends in music sales. Very important information and very interesting. You're not going to want to miss this. Thanks a lot, Crystal. Again, my name is Brother Andre Bright, and I just want to take a few minutes to talk to you about the industry as a whole. Uh, the music industry has seen a lot of changes since the year 2000. Uh, the industry, in terms of size, peaked about 1999 at about $16 billion in, in sales. And since then, we've seen a contraction in the business driven by some of the changing dynamics uh, that were afforded when digital technology came on board. Uh, the, the industry bottomed out about $6.9 billion uh, in 2011 and started to grow at $7 billion in 2012 and 2013. Uh, and it's just been, uh, it's a very dynamic situation right now. Uh, but the key is all this money that's being generated only is accessible for copyright owners. Now, Crystal talked about the performing rights organization, and they are very important. They collect all the performance royalties when you play on the airwaves or you're doing your music in, in rock stadiums or you're doing football games, uh, and they collect all that money. They collect almost $2 billion annually, and they pay it out to the copyright owners. So I pray that hopefully you're starting to catch the connection that this money is available, but it only goes to the copyright owners. Now, Crystal mentioned something about digital royalties. I just want to catch, catch you guys up on one thing. In order to collect digital royalties, you have to register with SoundExchange. They do all the digital uh, royalty collection uh, uh, for the United States. So that's a separate registration from performance rights organization. And with regards to that, uh, it's very important uh, that you do that because they, they're not, they have money available uh, that they haven't paid out because people with copyrights haven't registered with them. So if you've got music out there that's being played in the digital domain on internet or in a radio or something, you want to get on that. Now, one final thing I really want to talk about is uh, using samples. We found some, we've had some difficult experiences with clients who want to use sample beats. You know, you buy the beats from a download place, you pay $15, $20, and you're so excited. You want to go record your songs and everything. Well, you need to read the fine print. You know, it, there's a limit on what you can do with that. And by golly, if you don't follow those limits, you can get in some big trouble. You see, when you purchase those beats, you just lease the beats, but you don't own them. The copyright owner still retains the ownership of that. And so when you go out and sell all this money and make all this money using these leased beats, the copyright owners come back and say, you know what? It's time to get paid. So again, we can't talk about it in great detail, but we've seen a lot of people get tripped up on this and it's costed some people. We saw one of our clients that we were consulting with end up going to lawsuit because they chose not to follow our advice and they were sued subsequently. But again, for all these types of questions, reach out to us, Mad Praise Music Publishing, and we'll be glad to answer these questions. I pray that you've had an informative session and we look forward to hearing for you, from you in the future and best luck with your music endeavors. 